I like all of it except country music. Oh, speaking of which, you seen that stupid song that fucking woman wrote about being a redneck woman? How she likes being a redneck woman. Okay, if you guys, if, if you got crushed in this economy, if you want to get rich quick scheme, just write an anthem that celebrates being a complete fucking moron. And, um, so, and, and you basically tell people that underachieving in life is a good thing. And people will absolutely love it. Like, just sing those stupid songs where you're like, I'd rather have a beer and sit in my underwear than fucking eat a steak and visit other countries. Because, well, it's never going to be better than being right here with my fucking banjo and a bear and a tennis fit. All right. Something like that. It has to rhyme. You know, and then you got to throw the fucking flag in there. I'll tell you right now, if if... If if country musicians ever did stand up, they would be the fucking worst comedian. They would be the exact kind of comedian I hate, the one that panders to the crowd, which is what you know, the ones that fucking sit there and they look at this guy. He knows what I'm talking about, right? Hey, back me up, ladies. You know? Wow, look at this crowd. What a good looking crowd. Now give yourselves a round of applause for coming out tonight. God. I always love coming out here. This is one of my favorite cities. You know? They say that every town so it doesn't fucking mean anything. That's what country singers are like. A lot of them. Fucking singing those songs about supporting the troops. I mean, I mean, you fucking pussy. Take a chance. You know? You write a song supporting the fucking troops. Like, like any critic out there is now going to say like, well, you know, it's kind of hacky chord progressions. I've heard that before. They can't because you're insulated by fucking putting our troops in front of you, you fucking pussy. I like beer and ice cream. If you don't get the fuck out the country, well, you know, I like, I like, I like beer and ice cream too. You know, it's got everything in there, but saying we shouldn't fucking punch babies. Don't punch babies and don't step on the American flag. And if you do, I'm gonna punch you in the face. Everybody, all right. Thanks for listening this week. Sorry it was so disjointed and fucked up, but that's what you get when it's free, huh? Oh, a little Catholic guilt there. I do it for you. I did it for you. This guy sent me something about, uh, you know, I was talking about when you go in to go buy things and people ask for your phone number and all this fucking information and it fucking creeps me out. Every time they do that, I just think that they should play in the beginning of that Iron Maiden song, The Prisoner. You remember that from the 80s? Do you remember how that thing went? You remember this? The new number two. Who's number one? You are number six. Most psycho laugh ever. Can you imagine if your fucking dad would laugh at you like that back in the day? Be like, son, how many beers did you have tonight? You're just like, I just had two. Right, and he just fucking, all of a sudden the lights start dimming, it's going to be over. So anyways, this fucking guy, did that make any sense, by the way? I don't know. I'm fucking sitting here with one microphone, no headphones in a fucking hotel room. This is what you get. All right. So this guy um, said, Bill, can you believe how much fucking information people are willing to give away for no, to strangers for no reason? He goes, I got my hair cut the other day, and the first thing they say to me before hello or what can I do for you is, the first thing out of the gate is, what's your phone number? So I say, why do you need my phone number? She says, so we know who you are when you come in. Which is bullshit because they don't know you when you come in. They still have to ask what your goddamn number is. See, you got to love someone who actually fucking uses their brain. So anyway, she goes, he says, I don't want to give you my number. So then she scoffs in his face and says, um, we don't send the information out to anyone. It's just to keep track of you here. That's it. Um... And then she says, uh, then, okay, then the guy says, the guy wrote this really badly here. So then I guess he responds to, that doesn't make me feel any better. You don't need my phone number to cut my hair. Then this slag does this fine whatever that sounded exactly like your exaggerated impression of a dumb broad. Then she goes, how about your address? Dude, this is fucking, you know what? All these corporations are sharing this information to figure out exactly what you buy, when you buy it, what you like the best, so they can just fucking, I don't know what. 
you know, jack the prices of this shit up. So anyways, um, she goes, how about your address? And the guy goes, what are you going to do? Drop the haircut off at my house? Just cut my fucking hair. <laughs> uh, now there's three people in line behind me in this worthless tub of cum. Jesus. Leans around me and says, and says I guess to the people behind him, sorry this takes longer when they, then he writes they, you know, don't give any information. And then he says sarcastically, oh, I see. I'm the one uh, complicating this transaction. And it's not even her fault. It's her, uh, oh, and it's not even her fault. It's her corporate creep bosses and all the fucking sheep that let people do whatever they want. Sorry this is so long. Well, you should apologize to my listeners because they had to listen to me read it. Yeah, man, don't give those people your fucking phone numbers. Don't give them your address. I do that. Can can we get your phone number? Uh, No, you can't. We're not going to do anything with it. Uh, That's fine. That's fine. I know you're not going to do anything with it. I don't want you to have my phone number. What, are you going to call me up and see how my fucking haircut's going? Is it still short, or do you think you need an adjustment? You know, I don't understand people who help out corporations. I just don't. Have they done anything to demonstrate that they give a flying fuck about you or the drinking water in your town? Don't help those cunts. I mean, you can if you want to, but that's, I would just, I think it would be a better world if these fucking pricks didn't know every goddamn thing about you. You know, pretty soon you're going to walk in there and they're going to fucking ask if you can put a... uh, They can just bug you like Gene Hackman in the conversation, right? All right, dude, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Uh, If you want to know what's going on, you know, especially if you see, you know, when I switched over to uh, Lipsyn with the podcast and all that fucking shit, if you were out of the loop, it's because you weren't on my mailing list. I'm not... You know, how funny is this? How funny is this? Uh, How fucking hypocritical am I? I just said, don't give your phone number out to these cunts, and now here I am asking for your web address. I really... Why do you people listen to this? I'm an idiot. I have tickets for the finals. Not the finals. The final day of the Masters. Me and another buddy of mine are going down there because we knew Tiger Woods was going to play. We fucking knew it. Okay? Who's kidding who? You know he's sick of banging that broad. That's why he fucked around on her. It was her fault. She stopped blowing him. You know, she wasn't washing the dishes. She didn't make sandwiches for him anymore. She started taking Tiger for granted. And Tiger was sitting there in his billion-dollar lazy boy, and he's like, is this bitch taking Tiger Woods, the greatest fucking golfer of all time? Actually, he isn't. Jack Nicklaus, Jack Nicklaus is. But she's taking me for granted. Fuck this. I'm going to go fuck her for it. That's the one thing that I hated about that story is how they just never blamed her for his fucking around because it was clearly her fault and if you're wondering why I'm coming up with that I'm just using the you know it's be, it, I'm, I'm saying it because of my respect for females you know because I respect you guys so much that I'm actually using your train of thought when you look at when you see a woman get caught cheating and you always you always blame the guy well, it's probably because he wasn't paying attention to her. It's probably because he was doing this. It's probably because he was doing that. Well, the shoe's on the other foot. You know, they never say it's because she wanted to go out and get some dick. No. It's never because of that. It's because of something the guy was doing. He left his shoes in the fucking kitchen after she'd fucking mopped the floor. So therefore, she had to go to the fucking Luxor and collapse on somebody else's cock. Right? It's her fault. You know, where the fuck does she get off getting mad at fucking Tiger Woods? Do you even have a fucking job, woman? What is your job? To go around, go go fucking tanning? What do you got to do? I love these fucking twats who are married to some unbelievably rich person. Okay, they have kids with them and they don't have a fucking job and they still get help. Still got to have some fucking, you know, nanny. It's like, do you want to fucking do anything? I'm telling you, that's, that's the guy's fault. If you marry a fucking woman who you're making so much goddamn money, all right, that they don't even have a fucking job and they still need help, you need help with doing nothing? I'm raising kids. I don't know how to do it. What the fuck? My mother did that and had a job, you lazy twat. Get off the goddamn sofa. That's what I would do. I'd take her right across my knee and pull off her fucking Gucci flip-flop and I'd fucking paddle her right butt cheek. 
until she admitted how fucking wrong she was. What do you think about that? Maybe that's why I'm not a billionaire. You know? Because that's how I do it. Some paparazzi would take a picture of it. I'd do that. I'd paddle her little fucking right fanny as I ate grapes. And then when they question me, I'd just be, fuck you. The best goddamn golfer in the world. Thanks to me, your Sundays aren't boring. Come here. Come over here. I'll, I'll fucking sign your camera for you. All right? Take the film out. No, there's no film anymore. It's fucking digital, right? I don't know. I want somebody to embrace being a piece of shit. That's what I want. That's what I got to say there. Tiger Woods' wife is a lazy fucking twat. All right? And that's why he cheated on her. And I'm going to tell you this right now. The reason why he's playing the Masters is because they need the money. All right? This guy hasn't worked since November. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, God. Well, he's a fucking billionaire. Yeah, and he's living the lifestyle of a billionaire. Do you think he wants to? Of course he does, and he's got to keep that fucking whore happy. You know? Do you think she... Who do you think paid for all the fucking windows she smashed with that golf club? Right? I like how he denied that. She did not attack me uh, with the golf club. Really? Your windows exploded and then you drove into a tree? Were you fucking on mushrooms? Did you think you could drive into that little knot in the center of the trunk, Tiger? Give me a fucking break. What are you sticking up for? You know why? Because he married her. The fucking idiot. Now he's got this contract. He can't get out. He's, he's looking to lose all the... Ah, fucking idiot. I hope, I hope she listens to this. I don't even know her goddamn name. You know why I don't know your name, sweetheart? Because you never did anything with your life. You know? When was the last time you even fucking... You ever even win a swim meet? What about the preschool level? When kids are just happy they can even fucking stand up. Did you even win a ribbon? What have you ever done besides suck the dick? <laughs> suck the dick of the greatest golfer of the last 50 fucking years, other than Jack Nicholas. You know, that's your big accomplishment in life? Oh, you're hurt? Let me ask the fellas a question. Let me ask you this. What if you were shacking up with fucking Oprah, like Stedman? Do you think he gives a fuck if she fucks around on him? You gonna chase him down the, s or down the street with a ladle? Or some other fucking utensil? Because you know Oprah be eaten, right? Do you think he'd flip the... I wouldn't give a shit. Go ahead and fuck whoever you want, Oprah. I don't give a shit. Can I have another car? <laughs> That'd be awesome. What are you doing today? Nothing. Doing nothing. Playing fucking Xbox. That bitch is doing what everybody wants to do. Absolutely fucking nothing. You know what I mean? Why do we work? We work so we can we can have one zillionth of what that bitch has. She has the nerve to get mad at this guy because he's out there banging some fucking skanks. Because he's tired of her fucking lazy ass. What the fuck is wrong with people? Why don't the one out? What? I said it! <laughs> Say it, yeah, she's fucking lazy. Anytime you see a guy fucking around on his woman, I'm telling you, part of it is because he's a dog. The other part is because these women are so fucking, they're just lazy. It's, it's like they're not even human. They're just slothful. You know? They just sit around. They're just fucking laying around. Get off your asses, all of you. You want us to stop fucking around? You get off your fucking lazy asses. What do you think about that? Somebody sent me a really nasty email, yelling, uh, cursing me out because they sent me an email and I didn't answer their email. And he said, because you didn't answer my email, I didn't go to see any of your shows in Atlanta. And uh, I don't know. If I already talked about this, I apologize. If I didn't, uh, sir, I don't give a shit. All right? If you... If you I haven't learned anything from my podcast is I really don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck if you listen to this or you don't. I don't give a fuck if you go to my shows or you don't. I don't give a fuck. You know? Do I do I not want people to come to my shows? Of course I do. Do I not want people to listen to my podcast? Of course I don't. I want fuck I don't I got you know I got messed up there in those double negatives. 
I want people to come to my shows. I want people to listen to my podcast. But let me tell you something right now, fucko. I don't respond to fucking threats. Don't fucking threaten me or don't fucking, you know, try to put some sort of ominous bullshit on how you want me to fucking behave with your fucking email. I don't give a fuck about your email. I get a fucking hundreds of emails every goddamn week. And if I don't get to yours, I don't fucking get to yours. So go fuck yourself. If you want to pout and not come to my show, don't go to my show. I don't give a fuck. You sound like a cunt anyways. You probably go to my show and then fucking judge it. And be like, um, the first eight minutes were good. And then I thought from minute 12 to 17. Go fuck yourself. All right? Why don't you go stick your head through your fucking computer monitor? God knows you probably still have one of those old ones. You know, shaped like a fucking microwave. Is that what you got? As you work, look how fast people drive on this fucking street. I'm literally getting to that age. Yelling out the window at kids. Stop driving like I did at your age. There's another good character for a sketch. You know? Crabby, honest old man. Honest, crabby old man. <laughs> Stop treating me with the same disrespect I had for my elders when I was at your age. Um, or maybe not. Shit, God knows SNL could turn that into like a 15-minute sketch and then stretch it into an hour and 40-minute movie. Um, all right, there we go. I burned a bridge. I burned a bridge there. Like I was going to get cast on that at 41. All right, here's another new section. This is the advice column. It's called Ask Bill. Isn't that clever? Um, I know I'm a fucking moron and I don't know shit, so if you guys think I'm giving somebody bad advice, please let me know. Um, and I, I will pass on your advice the following week because I don't need this responsibility. But here we go. Here's this person's uh, question for the week. Hey, Bill, I was hoping to get your advice on a girl. Uh, this past summer, I met a girl through a friend. She's pretty much the cutest girl I've ever seen. We hung out with the three of us for a whole week until my friend left for the Army. But me and the girl, we kept hanging out. Problem is, is she's dumb as a brick. And she's a huge pothead. I'm not into that stuff myself, so it's kind of weird. She's cute, though, so I put up with it, and plus she's pretty funny. So anyways, I take her to Canopy Lake Park, and, which is an amusement park in Salem, Massachusetts. Uh, I pay for her there. I take her to the movies and out to eat. It, uh, and I, I guess evidently he's paying for all of that. But he says, but if she gets any money, it goes to her pot. And I'm thinking this is going somewhere, but it goes nowhere for a few more weeks. So I stopped talking to her for about six months until last week. So I guess when he thinks he thinks it's going somewhere, he means they're going to hook up, but they never hooked up. So he, anyways, the dude stops talking to her for, two, for six weeks. Six months, I'm sorry. So anyways, uh, he, he goes on to say, I ran into her mom, which led me to having to go hang out with her again through a long story. So anyways, I'm in the same boat again with her. She keeps calling me, but there's nothing to do. All she wants to do is get high and drive around. I've avoided her calls the past two days. What should I do? Ride it out and hope something goes into the bedroom or ditch her again? Ah, uh, dude. Um, the best way to explain this is to rent that Chris Rock special where he does that joke about being in the friend zone. You know, you're just a friend right now. She's fucking using you. All right? Um, you're not going to hook up with her. Basically, you made the right move the first time. You somehow got into that friend zone thing, and, she, and you know, you were paying for everything, and nothing was happening, and then you stopped talking to her for six months, okay? And the thing is, when you do that, the next time you see him, that's when you come back to town like fucking uh, Mickey Rourke in Rumblefish. You got to come back with that vibe. Like all of a sudden you're dangerous, you're fucking motorcycle boy, and everything leads to you fucking, you know, putting her on her back with the legs in the air. Because you, you, you went right back to doing what the fuck you did before. You know, you're hanging out with her. It's not gonna, I'm going to tell you, dude, it's not going to happen with this girl. It's over. All right? So, yeah. I mean... What, what, what are you going to do with it? Keep paying for her weed? Taking her to movies? Fuck that. This is what you need to do. 
you need to go to your local meat market, all right, wherever all the skanks hang out. And what you got to do is you just just hit on a bunch of girls that you don't give a shit about. It's kind of like as a comedian doing open mics where, you know, once you've established yourself, if you go in and you're doing an open mic, it doesn't matter if you bomb. You know you got an act. You're just trying out shit, seeing what the fuck works. So if you hit on a bunch of girls that you don't give a fuck about, then you don't give a shit when they shut you down, and that kind of toughens you up. And you're basically, you got to come up, you haven't figured out what it is that you need to do to get a girl, like, in bed. You know what I mean? you got to figure out whatever the fuck works for you. You know, is it being an obnoxious ass? Uh, I, I, I don't know what. But just go hit on a bunch of skanks and say a bunch of shit that you would never say to anybody that you would respect. Okay? And I know women probably don't like this, but it's what guys have to do. And I don't want to hear any, any women giving me shit about that because you have no fucking idea what we go through. And that's why there's the double standard of the whore and the stud. Women have forever asked that question going, you know, how come if a guy does it, he's a stud, and if a woman does it, she's a whore? I'll tell you why. Because there's no skill in a woman getting laid and getting laid. You know what I mean? For a guy to hook up, it's a skill. You have to convince somebody to fuck you. Women, all you have to do is show up, all right? And that's why... You know, I think I told this story, but you know, it's like it's like watching a fat guy eat a fucking ice cream, you know, and listening to him bitch about it. How come when I eat ice cream in public, everybody's like, oh, what a fat fuck? Because it's gluttonous. It's gluttonous. That's why. That's why nobody respects women, you know? That's why nobody respects, you know? I re- You know something? I, this is what, I, I respect Madonna right now, because Madonna is long past her fucking years. I mean, that chick is, is coming up on menopause. And she's still got guys rubbing one out. So, I mean, you got to respect that. That's like, you know, she, and she's still, it, it's still not as hard for her at 50 to get laid as it is for this fucking guy going to Canopy Lake Park with this fucking gorgeous girl. I feel for you, man. I feel for you, but let her go. Fuck that. You know, you're setting yourself up to be like that dude in, in Goodfellas. You know, when Scorsese's mom tells that joke, and she said, you're always talking. It sounds better in Italian. And Joe Pesci explains it. And what does it mean? It means that he's content to be a jerk. You don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be that guy content to be a jerk. Fuck her, all right? And if she calls you up, just be honest with her. Just say, look, you know, I'm looking for some... Uh, uh, you know, don't listen to me this part, because I don't, I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to say it right. I was going to say, I'm looking for something more, but that sounds gay. You can't say that. How do you say, look, I want to bang you, and you're not banging me. So other than that, I'm just buying you weed. So what the fuck? You know, you got to find a, the right way to say that. <laughs> Dude, just let her go. Just fucking let her go. All right. Questions for the week. Uh, oh, and don't get yourself involved in that situation again. Do you understand me? Well, you'll have uh, 14 listeners to answer to. All right. Qu- Anyways. So I was so bored this week, and I was just like, uh, I'm going into a negative funk here. I have got to do something positive. So I actually went up, and I go, you know, after I started reading about Cincinnati, I was like, maybe I'll go to a museum. So the closest museum was this museum about the Underground Railroad. The Underground? Not like that. That's what the uh, Swedes call their, uh, call their subway. The Underground. In England, they call it the Tube. Yeah, look at me, fucking world traveler. I know how to say grilled cheese in five different languages. Um, oh, God, my brain's so fucking tired. Come on, Bill, you can make it. You can make it. Here we go. What am I talking about here? So I go, all right, go to the Underground Railroad. Now, usually I don't like going to shit like that, okay? I understand how evil white people are, and uh, I've seen enough shit in my lifetime that I really don't want to be reminded. I go on YouTube. I see all the shit that people write. It's fucking, you know, it's depressing. But I'm figuring this is the Underground Railroad. There's a happy ending after this shit, right? Starts off with the slavery, but then there's freedom, right? And there's going to be a big, you know, we are the world thing at the end, you know? So I walk in there, and I, they give me this little radio. And I go, all right. And I go, and it's one of these museums where you start at the top, and then you wind your way all the way down. And I walked in there, and it was fucking horrific. It was horrific. 
Just seeing. They, they stacked them up like fucking wood in these goddamn ships. Oh, and people's families getting separated. And it was just in every fucking picture. Just had some black dude, a woman, just getting the shit kicked out of him. And then some evil looking white guy. And uh, I quickly realized I was one of the only white people in there. So now I'm looking at black people and I'm feeling like an asshole. Like, uh, yeah, hey, uh. Yeah, sorry about that. I kind of got a little out of control. Uh, it wasn't really me. It was my ancestors. And I just want to get the fuck out of there, right? So, oh, it, was, it was brutal. I could, only, I could only be in there for like half, like half hour, 40 minutes. And I was like, I already know this shit. I know this shit. I already know this shit. This is fucking, it was horrible. It was fucking horrible. And I just basically fast walked down like five flights of stairs to get, it wasn't even stairs. It was like a round thing. You know, I should have just been going, I'm sorry, all the way down, right? And when I fucking went to leave, this is the best part. I handed my radio, and I'm so full of white guilt at that point that I'm trying to be friendly as possible. That when I hand it to the lady, the lady behind the counter, this black woman, she goes, she goes, how did you enjoy the museum? And I was so trying to say something positive, I went too big. I went, it was great. Then I felt like an asshole. I sounded like I enjoyed it too much. And I want to be like, great, like, like, informative great. You know? Not great like, you know, woo, slavery. <laughs> slavery on two. On two, ready, break. Um, ah, yeah. It was, fuck, it was brutal. It was brutal. So, I don't know. That's it. Yeah.